chop it, chop it, chop it See, up. in my hood, they ain't really much to eat. Popeye's on the corner, McDonald's right across the street. All this talk about guns and the drugs, pretty serious. But look at what they feeding, y'all. That's what's really killing us. Please change. The food in my school make it good. So, yeah, we back at it, man. We back at it. Bobby Smith, what up, family? Um, just here bringing people from the health community to have discussions to see, uh, you know, how people can get better, you know, saying, see what's going on in the world, all of that. So today we got one of them, um, people that I called an electric being, um, cause I heard a lot about him when I first came into the community and I, uh, I've been, you know, watching him and subscribe to him and liking all his statuses and listening to him as he's like a little mentor for me. So, uh, Matt, who today, every, everybody, what's up, Matt? You good? I'm good. I'm good, man. So glad to be here. Thanks for having me, dude. Yes, 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 yes. I'm glad to have this discussion, man. Um, first, uh, shit, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's just tell the people a little bit about what you do, who you are, how you came up, what's going on with you. So, yeah, I mean, I would call myself a holistic health and detoxification coach. And I'm just basically guiding people step by step through the same process that, you know, took me from a state of sickness and disease, dis-ease to a state of optimal levels of health, the highest levels of health. You know, um, I got sick at a very young age, around 21 years old is where things, everything kind of came to a head and I was really struggling, suffering in pain, embarrassed. And that's when I was like, I got to make a change. I got to figure out the deal. What's going on with all this? You know, what is disease? What causes it? How do we, what's the solution? You know, because I was going to the doctor and, you know, that's what we were raised on. Go to the doctor for health, right? That's what we were all told. And they just wanted to put me on medications. And I was like, this is not the way it, you know, it didn't resonate with me at all. And I've always been somewhat of a, you know, I said, I'm a rebel. I'm, I'm against authority, you know? So I was like, <laughs> I'm going to find my own way. I'm going out on my own and I'm digging deep and I'm figuring out what the deal is with this, because this doesn't make sense for you to just tell me at 21 years old, take this medication. And it's like, okay, until when? And then it's like, for the rest of your life. I'm like, okay, well, you know, that does, that just doesn't make any sense at all. You know, I don't, I don't want to be dependent on the pharmaceutical companies, you know, for a lifetime. Right. And right. So I knew that, okay, so the pill, I'm taking the pill, but what happens if I come off the pill? The problem still exists. So we're just treating symptoms at that point. So I want to get down to the root cause. That's what, that's what I always wanted to figure out. I wanted the truth right? We're both truth seekers. That's all we really want. We know truth is, is true freedom. When you know the truth, that's when you can really empower yourself and change your life, transform your health in every aspect. So that's what I set out to do. And in within three to six months after I found out, you know, about holistic health and detoxification, I got rid of every single condition I had in three to six months. And that's where I was like, wow, there's something here. Facts, facts. You don't understand it really until you experience it for yourself. Once you have a condition, a disease, or uh, some type of illness, and you get rid of it through doing these, you know, healing modalities, these practices, protocols, until you see yourself heal and feel yourself heal, you really can't grasp how how deep this is and how powerful it is. But that's just a quick summary of where I've been, what I'm doing now. Facts, facts. That's good. That's a, hey, hey, see, when you take your, when you take your health into your own hands is when you really start your own journey. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's when I, that's when I really started learning about everything that I'm going through. When I start feeling like I could take my sickness into my own health, alcoholism, uh, obesity and all of that shit. So um, let me ask you this. When you start taking your health into your own hands, what's the first thing that you notice the difference in? Like, when, like learning and well, like, what's the first lies that became exposed to you to like, you like, this is the way to go instead of going that way? It was probably the, the biggest thing that I found was really that the body, every single one of us, our bodies are self-healing organisms, right? So really that it's not any type of external thing outside of us that heals us. It's the body itself. It has an innate ability and healing mechanisms to, you know, repair and regenerate itself. So meanwhile, I'm outside looking for, 
answers like a magic pill, some type of solution, a drink, a elixir to heal me. But it's like, I am the healer, right? right. My right. body will heal on itself on its own. All I got to do is create the proper environment and conditions and get out of the way. So that was really just, that just shifted my entire paradigm of thought about health when I realized that, that we hold the power. How, how old are you, Matt? I'm 34 now. 34? Because I see when you're following, they listen to you, man. Like, like when you say something, people attach to that. Like, how did you come into knowledge? Like, like how did you, what was your experience like when you first came into like realization that this shit is different for us? Yeah, I mean, really all that I'm saying is things that I am just feel like I'm speaking the truth. And I feel that that kind of resonates with people. You know, when the, when the truth is spoken, it's like there's something about it that makes you feel something. And I feel that a lot of people that follow what I post, they just resonate with that. And I, I tell people like, you already know everything that I'm talking about. I'm just helping you remember. That's mm. it. You just forgot who you were. You forgot what you need. You forgot your power. So I'm here, you know, just to kind of speak that truth, help them remember, help them take back their power, help them take responsibility and control of their lives, transform their health, you know, and really the, my, my greatest teacher was nature. That was it. Once I found out about nature, the laws of nature, and all I did was just try and align myself with those laws, right? And try to see, you know, what my, my anatomy, my physiology, my biology, instinctually, intuitively how I felt about everything. And through that, I was just able to kind of direct myself. Mm, mm. So when you say uh, give back our power, what is our power? We're like, what do you think our power is that people don't realize that we got? Like, cause in the health community, we like, we're not talking to people in the health community. I guess like most people in that community, when you fixate it on getting healthy, you kind of know what life is kind of about. But I'm talking about for the people, the naysayers and people who not really on the healthy track. What power are they lacking that they could have? I think the power was that they forgot who they were. And that's through, you know, that's through school, you know, the miseducation system. That's through societal type of structures through family members who, who didn't know their own power either, just kind of telling them you're not capable of doing something. I think the real power that they don't understand is that, or they may, maybe they do understand, but that they are, each and every one of us are the creators of our own reality. So every single thing that we thought, every single thing that we think and every thought that we have is a reflection of the reality that we experience. And all we're doing is bringing these thoughts into that reality and creating what we want to experience or what we don't want to experience. So I think a lot of people don't realize they feel like they're dependent, right? On the system, on the government, on, on a job, on money, on this, on that. And they don't realize that they, uh, the real power is within you. Everything that you need is already within. And too many people looking out, are looking outside for, for all this help. And when really you need to, you need to empower yourself. You need to become your own leader. Everyone's looking for a leader, like a president, some polit politician and politics, you know, right. but it's like you, you are the person that you're looking for. You know? Man, that's the, A. Hey, that couldn't have been no chore because like, I just realized that you feel me over the last year, like the power that I got right now. Um, like my family be calling me um, about advice, how to get better, you know what I'm saying, mental health wise and everything because they see the change in me. And that's why I be telling people every day, you got to be the change that you want people to see. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm becoming now. And that's why we having the conversation now. When I first got in the community, I looked at your page. I was like, this dude high level than the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? You was coaching this shit, but it was an inspiration to me. So now to be here talking to you and to be a fruitarian in the community and stuff, it shows you that that's the power you got when you take it back. You feel me? So with that being said, what you think is holding people back? 
from reaching their power. Cause like, like I I I came up as like I came up. You ever know? You ever heard of like the Thirteenth Son? Thirteenth Son? Yeah, it's a dude called the Thirteenth Son from Tampa, Florida. Well, What's that's mu- music. No, no, he like a um, he, he a more he a Moorish American. He teach about uh, the universe and all that shit. Oh, okay, okay, I haven't heard of that. Well, yeah, that's who I, that's who I first learned about, and when I came into knowledge about uh, who we really are and what we really supposed to be out here doing, that's when I that's when I started trying to get on my journey. So let me ask you this: What's the difference? First of all, what kind of people do you help? You a health coach? What, what's most of your client? What's your client base? Most of the people that come to me are the people that are suffering with chronic diseases, chronic illness, severe you know, from cancer to diabetes to high cholesterol, they're just, they're in pain or they're suffering from something. So I take everybody from, you know, stage four cancer all the way to the diabetes, all the way to bleeding ovarian cysts, you know, all the way to, you know, insomnia, POTS, Raynaud syndrome, to, you know, even the, uh, the thing, you know, an injury from the thing, if you know mm. what I'm saying. Right, right. So, so it's just most, mostly people that are in severe degenerated states of health. Wow. How do you help them? You help them with, you, you do fruit-based diets or just raw vegan transition? Like what, what's your recipe? Every, everything, man. Everything. So oh, nine. everything is, it's all about setting a foundation and then going into transition and then detoxification and then rebuilding. So the program that I have is, is a holistic program. It takes a holistic approach because health and healing is, is about not just changing one thing, you change everything. Yes. So diet is one aspect of health. I like to cover every single facet of health. No stone left unturned, right? How you breathe, how you sleep, how you move, how you sunbathe, right? Mm. Right? How you meditate. Right. How, every single different thing that I could think of that worked synergistically to create the highest levels of health and healing, I put together. Right. So it, that's what it is. It's a crazy comprehensive type of thing where we're hitting every single side of health. So it's not just diet, but we start from, you know, whole foods, plant based is, is typically where I start people at. Right. Mm. And then we go into things like mucus lean foods. Then we go into, you know, raw till four type stuff. Then we go into raw and fruit based. And then we go into different types of detoxes. Mm, Okay. That's yeah. That sounds like the pretty much the process that, you know, you should go through. Um, What do you think about, uh, what was I about to say, fasting? That's my bread and butter, man. Fasting. (laughs) Fasting is is the ultimate healer. Yeah. Because because that when you're fasting, you're just letting the body, you're you're giving the body all the energy it needs to divert and focus itself on its healing mechanisms and processes. So the fasting is the ultimate. It always has been, always will be, right? That's the first medicine. Now, a lot of people need to work their way into that though, because we're talking about modern day severe states of je- degeneration and toxicity. So that's why there's a way to work people into that, not just jump into fast or fasting coming from a standard American diet or some junk food diets, you know? So yeah. everybody's in a different place. So I take it, I take it from wherever they're at and I work them way, their way into this through a balanced, steady approach because in my eyes, health is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You didn't get sick overnight. You're not going to heal overnight. And you know, I'm not I'm not crazy about just diving into extremes. Some sometimes extremes are needed. Well, I'm all about balance. Balance, doing something that's enjoyable, fun, and you know, it's the most amazing, beautiful journey of anybody's life. Right. Facts. Facts. Man, being healthy. I I promise you, being healthy, being at this level of health, is nothing like it in the world. My eight. I've been on eight days of watermelon, man. My clarity, my confidence, my energy, everything is like upgraded or not. You feel me? Yeah. And uh, I just, I'm just, I'm ready to take it to another level. 
Um, DeMarco said, what up, Coach Matt? <laughs> hey, what's good, DeMarco? How we doing, yeah. man? <laughs> That's the family right there. Um, so I was going to ask you about that. So, you know, you help all colors, too, black men, white men. Do you think it's a difference in the in the uh, physi physiology or uh, the how we supposed to be eating in white people, black people? No. No? No. There's no, there's, you know, people talk about blood types. People talk about, you know, different origins of, you know, ancestral, you know, where they're, you know, where they came from, different countries, different habitats, environments, um, different sexes, male, female. It's like, unless you have different organs than this person, you're going to require the exact same thing as that person. So what about when Yaki, Yaki, you know who Yaki Awaken is, right? Uh, y Yaki, I think I've heard of Yaki Awaken. Yaki Awaken. Yeah, real big in the health community, real big with the herbs, man. He said, he said, us as melanated people, we got 150 trillion cells. He said, Caucasians or Europeans or whatever they want to be called, got 100 trillion cells. You know anything about that? Well, no matter how many cells, those cells still require the same forms of nourishment because we're still the same species. Mm. Right? Mm. And then the only comparable thing from, say, me to you is that you probably require more sunlight exposure than I do. Mm. So what, what about they say that? The, what about when they say that y'all that y'all can't take the sun? Uh, I'd say you you can't take the sun if your body is acidic, if your body is full of mucus, acids, undigested foods, chemical toxicity, and you're chronically dehydrated. Right. And I get that because I came from that place where I could go out in the sun for five minutes and get sunburn. Right. So you don't get in. So you don't. So you don't get involved with the, the narrative of white versus black. And when it comes to dieting and eating and all that shit. No, still, no. The, still the same species, all just different colors. Right. Same organs, same glands, same fluids. Right. Right. I mean, all yeah. All requiring the same thing. See, you might you might be able to get more sunlight, require more sunlight, but guess what? You still require sunlight, and I still require sunlight, right? So there may be just even small adjustments, but we still need the same exact thing. I get it. I get it. I just ask everybody perspective on that because I think it's so interesting when I heard you say that. Um, Marcus Plant Man want to know how would you help heal ha Gra Graves' disease real quick. Graves disease. I mean, it also depends on where that person's coming from. Is that person eating a standard American diet? But either way, the solution, the problem and the solution still remain exactly the same. See, this is where people like to complicate things because I think that's part of human nature, just making things complicated Thanks. when they don't need to be. Health and healing are simple, right? But we, say, we still think there's some magical elixir out there that we need right? Some supplement. I need this supplement, right? It's like, you don't need any of that, right? And the process is still the same. It's still about creating the right environment for the body and getting out of its way. And so many times, and you ask me, what, what do you think the biggest problem is with us, you know, achieving health or doing things we want to do? And I'd say it's always, it's us. It's because we're always in our own way. We're our biggest enemies most of the time. So, when we get out of our way, when we get out of the body's way, that's when things really start to transform, right? That's when you really come to life. So I would still work, I'd work the person the same way every other disease. Some people are more severe than others. So we would jump, jump in more quickly to deeper levels of detoxification. But it's still about, you know, working your way from dense foods to light foods, right? That's, the name of the game is elimination. Health is 80% elimination, 20% nourishment. So either way, we still need to get all of that internal waste and toxicity out of the body, restore the inner terrain, right? Get it oxygenated, get it alkaline, internal purification, right? That's really it. You got two causes of the disease. One, toxicity. Two, deficiency. Deficiency being deprivation of oxygen to the cells 
and dehydration, right? Toxicity being any type of foreign matter, waste matter, right? Unnatural foods, chemical toxins, heavy metals, and that's the mucus and the acidic metabolic waste. When you address those two things, then you solve every one of these problems, every one of these diseases. So although we have the allopathic medical system has created and labeled all these different names for different diseases, mm -hmm. right? It's just all those are just different symptoms of the same exact problem. So that's where people complicate things where it's like, what about this disease? What about this disease? What about this disease? It's like every single one of them are still caused by the same exact <laughs> thing. Right. So do the same thing to get rid of them. Exactly. And it takes discipline, man. I think that's what most people like. No discipline. discipline. Okay. So um, let me, before I go on to some other stuff real quick, let me stay on this basis. Organic versus conventional food. How you feel about that? Well, I feel that organic is always going to be best. Facts. You know? But what about what about if you can't get it? Is it all right to eat conventional fruits? Do you think it's a problem with eating conventional fruits? Or or should people just grow their own and not eat conventional fruits? What, what's the deal? Well, I mean, the greatest way to consume food is to grow it yourself. But yeah. listen, that's not ideal anymore. Right. That's not that's not realistic for a majority of the people out there. So, yeah, I think it's okay to eat conventional food. I think organic should be the focus. Natural foods with, without chemicals should be the main focus. But listen, I've seen conventional fruits that a, a lot of the time, they're better quality than organic, That's... right? They're more juicy, ripe, sweet than the organic. So, you know, I really, it, it also depends on, you know, if, there's, if it's got skin, if it's protected by some type of skin. Now, pesticides and chemicals seep through skin right? They penetrate the skin and they go into the fruit. But still, um, first of all, if I'm getting conventional, I'm going to make sure it's got some skin. I wouldn't do blueberries or strawberries, grapes. I wouldn't really do those conventional. But things like mangoes, stuff like that. If I see a conventional mango that looks, you know, legit, looks delicious, I'm eating that. I'm buying it. Facts. You know? So Facts. listen, we do the best we can with what we have, but we're not in the Garden of Eden anymore. <laughs> you know? Facts, so, man. Gotta be realistic. Yeah, be realistic and, and start somewhere. You know what I'm yeah. saying? The, when you start somewhere, then you'll end up in a better place, man. And I tell you like this. Um, what about uh let me ask you this real quick? Uh Marcus, real quick, he said, Would you recommend eating to help? She's coming from she's coming from a whole plant plant-based food diet. Um already. So yeah, just eliminate. You gotta eliminate what you what's causing the things that you eat that's causing the problem. Yeah, whole foods, plant based. That's 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 only that's only first base in the rounds of health, right? So that's the starting point. Now you got to work your way around the rounds, the around the bases, from dense foods to light foods, and that's when you start eliminating things like the grains, right, starches, right, and you mm -hmm. work your way towards more light foods and water dense foods. Right. That's where the fruits come in. That's where the juices come in. That's where the leafy greens come in. That's where the coconut water comes in. Yeah. Right. Seeded so. versus non-seeded. You is it a problem with seeded seedless fruits? Because I'm only asking you the questions like this because this is the topics that I get rammed on. Seedless versus seeded, organic versus non-organic. Like, and I'm so tired of it because I wasn't even worried about none of that when I was going through my transition. You know what I'm saying? I was just eating fruit. I didn't care if it was yeah. seedless or not. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I think that's the best mind state to have. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But what's your take on seedless versus seeded? Agreed, man. I think there's too much obsession and focus on seeded, non-seeded. It's like, first of all, we've had seedless fruits for a long time, right? <laughs> you could go back to early 1900s before GMOs even came in. Right. GMOs came in during the 90s. Yeah. Right. We're talking about 1910, 1920. You had seedless fruits. All right. So I've I've seen people heal on conventional seedless fruits just fine. Right. It, it didn't inhibit their progress. Right. So I'm not so much concerned about the seeds. I'm more concerned about how much water is contained within that food. Right, because the water is what's going to hydrate you. Structured living electric water is what's going to hydrate you on a cellular level. 
And that's what's going to allow the body to begin to flush the system. And it's allowed to carry out its processes of healing. Right? That's what it is about the water content of your food. If your food doesn't have water, guess what? It's taking water from you. Facts. So too many people focused on the seeded, non-seeded, right? It's just like, just eat, just eat the grapes, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest one right there, the seeded versus seeded. You know you're familiar with Orville Douglas, aren't you? Yeah, of course. Of course. You seen you seen what he just did, man? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he went on like 90-something days of grapes. Man, that's insane, bro. Yeah, he's that's, a freak. He's a freak of nature, man. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about this 75 days of watermelon that I'm on? I like, think, I think it's great. You know, it, everybody's going to have different goals and things like that. You know, right. it's not everybody needs to do 75 days. Not everybody needs that. But if that's what you want to do to, to take yourself to the next level, mind, body, spirit, right? Then that's what you got to do for yourself. You want to challenge, then you go for it and you go all in. Yeah. Right. And I think amazing things can happen at that point. That's a fact. That's a fact. Challenging yourself is the best thing you can do for yourself. Absolutely. Um, that's where the growth is. On, on everything. Um, uh, is the earth flat or round, man? <laughs> <laughs> so from where I came from, from you know, where I started on this whole journey, I was a conspiracy theorist mm -hmm. since I was way younger. You know, that started when I was really young. But from what I found, 99% of everything that we've been told is a lie. Facts. So Facts. I'm so glad you said that. Go so, ahead, go ahead. So that's what I can tell you. What I can't tell you is whether the earth is flat or not. But what I would lean towards is that it's flat. Mm. <laughs> now, as far as whether it's flat or not, I don't really obsess or concern myself over things that are out of my control, right? Nice. So, and, and I'm not going to tell anybody, for, you know, something's for a fact unless I experience it for myself or I see it for myself. So mm -hmm. if I go up in a spaceship one day and I go and look down on the earth and I'm like, oh, shit, that's flat, right? Then I'll be like, the earth is definitely flat. Right, right. You know? But I can't see it. First of all, and I mean, maybe you can if you, you know, it, between physics and science of it, but I don't, I don't keep myself up at night or really go crazy about things that are out of my control, because whether it is flat or whether it is round, that's not going to completely change my life, right? It's kind of like, you know, watching sports. It's like, yeah, you might have a favorite team. And if your favorite team wins the Super Bowl, the championship, it's like, okay, great. It was fun, but how does that change your life? Right? What did it do to your life? I think people focus on the wrong things too much because um, like uh, even with sports, entertainment and all that shit, that shit is a distraction to me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I don't, none of that. You feel me? Like none of it. But uh, when it comes to conspiracy theories and all that shit, Earth being flat and all that, I don't focus on it either. I get into the conversation sometimes because I think it's unique. But um, other than that, I don't get involved. But I will say this, though. I will say this. Getting back to nature and, and, and going on walks and all that shit got me looking at the Earth a little more. What you think about the firmament? <laughs> you think they ever been to space? You think the moon landing fake? What about that? That's something. That's that, that's light conspiracy theories too. But I just want to I want to get your opinion on this because I just don't hear people talking about it in the health community a lot. Yeah, I would say, first of all, yes, I would say sports and pretty much all entertainment is a distraction from ourselves. Right. They're trying to make sure you're not focusing on yourself. They're making sure you're not improving and progressing yourself day in, day out. Right. They want you distracted. They want you numbed down. They want you just entertained and comfort comfortable. Right. Because that no growth happens in in the comfort zone, and if everybody's stuck in that comfort zone, then they don't, they don't, they're not giving a shit about what's really happening, right? And they're not trying to improve their lives. They're not trying to set themselves free, right, from the modern day slavery. You know. So as far as NASA and space and going to the moon, I'd say it's all a load of shit. I don't, I don't I don't think we ever went to the moon. I think the whole thing was fake. 
<laughs> I, think, I think it's obvious. I think it's obvious as hell. I get into the bigger conspiracies, like when it comes to dealing with our people and how they, uh, you know, like real shit. When I get into conspiracy theories, I get into the shit that people don't talk about, like how we being held in bondage, how they got the black community all fucked up on drugs and how it's designed to be that way and all that shit. I don't give a fuck about the moon landing and all that shit. That don't, that, like you said, that don't got nothing to do with me. Uh, hold on, let me get to some comments, man, because this is a live. They said, Lashay Taylor, what's up? What's up? What's up? She said, they say it's round. I assume it's flat. They lie about everything, so why not? But I have no clue, nor do I care. All conspiracy theories unite. Marcus Flatman said, can you be more specific on Graves' disease? More specific. We are going to attempt to heal her. We need a starting point. So, Marcus, I think I think what he's trying to find out is about how to start off from killing her from Graves' disease. I'm not sure what you really want to know, Marcus. Yeah, I mean, I mean I talk, it's, I'm not. It's just elimination, elimination of getting down thing. I'll tell you what. The two, the only two natural foods on earth for humans are one fruit and two tender greens those are the only two natural foods for humans everything else is a condiment everything else is something you could just have fun with right so that's so, what i would say we work our way down to the most natural thing that there is right and begin elimination eliminating the things that are unnatural eliminate eliminating eliminating the things that are dense and more difficult to break down you got to free up the energy in the body. And the only way that's going to happen is if you eliminate the foods that are hard to break down and digest. Fruits, fruits are the easiest food to digest. They require very little digestive energy. So that's what you want to work your way towards, towards the fruits, towards the fresh pressed juices, towards the coconut water, right? Raw, living foods. Cooked foods are always going to take much more energy they're always they're also going to take a certain amount of water out of your body the focus should be hydration right your mother has to get hydrated and you know so eventually you're going to have to work her all the way to a diet of raw living foods and then once you go into raw living foods then you go another step into more light less dense then you go into 100 percent water dense fruits then you go into fresh pressed juices, right? Then you go into coconut water or water if that's where it needs to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but there's yeah. a whole bunch of different other types of, you know, things that you need to refine and tweak, right? That I, I just, I can't get into specifics about what she should do because I don't right. know anything about her. Right, right, right. Definitely, definitely. Um, Back... Yeah, yeah. So that with, with with stuff like that, you have to do like the research. You have to, you know, book a consultation or something. Then get into the specifics of that. So, um, what I was gonna say about uh, what was I at with the conspiracy theories? That's what I was talking about before I went to those questions. We were talking about NASA and NASA. Movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so right now, that's what I've been on, man. I've been on this this firmament thing. I've been on the uh the uh firmament, the black Nazis, you know, all of this stuff, right? But in the health community, the food industry is the enemy, right? What do you think about um big pharma, uh big food, all of that? I, I think, think I think they don't have good intentions whatsoever i think the main goal for the pharmaceutical companies and the food industry big agriculture is profits and control so they're trying to create dependency they're trying to create more profits and when you can do that then you have complete control of a population when you keep them sick when you keep them addicted and you keep them dependent on your products, then you have control of those people. So I, I don't trust them as far as I could throw them. 
you know, as far as I've seen, they're just creating a whole bunch of disease, sickness, and death. So my, my job as a coach is to get people away from that as much as possible, to create as much independence as possible, to help people and guide them towards true health freedom. Man, that's a fact. Start with the motherfucking fruit. Start with your research. I swear to God. Oh, um, man. Um, <laughs> I come from I come from a dark place, family. I come from um, sickness. I come from alcoholism. I come from being a bad person. You feel me? Um, what's the first step you would tell somebody like me, like who coming from that dark ass place of misery right now, who don't think shit can just get right like why like what would you tell them to make you to make them believe you know i'm not in the business of making anybody believe anything i'm mm. not i'm not i never try to convince anybody um what they should do they know they know deep down what they need you know what i will tell them is that that they deserve love right that they need to love themselves right? Before you can love other people or change your life, you have to have that type of self-love where you, f you know that you're worthy and deserving of love, right? And you got to give that to yourself, you know? So I think it all starts with mindset, right? You have to have some type of desire to change. You have to, you might've been coming from a place of what I call a living hell, you know, where you're li literally living on hell on earth. And that's where a lot of people are coming from. And that's sometimes that's the only way people change is when things become so unbearable, so, you know, painful that they're like, I can't go on this way anymore. And I think that's where that's where it starts for most people. So I would I would tell them that you need to love yourself and you didn't you need to know that you're worthy of it. And I think you need to know that. You need to, some way, somehow, you need to remember how powerful you are. That's a fact. That's a fact. Um, what do you think about? Uh, because I come from, um, the 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 space where everything seemed impossible. Everything seemed like it's hard to do. Everything seemed like it's not reachable. And then, then in this community, you got everybody making see everything making everything looking easy. Uh everybody in the tropics, everybody living like this, looking good. That don't seem realistic, right? Um, what's the approach? What's the what's the outlook? Where where's where, where are we headed in this in this world in the health community? If it in, in terms of getting people to Get, eat more fruits and transition. How do we do that? I think we do need to be more realistic about where people are coming from. And we got to, you know, as, as much as my posts may just speak the blunt truth, I always tell people I work with and who I speak with that it's not about perfection. You need to get that whole mentality about perfection out of your head. And I think everybody, we need to strive for progress and improvement and trying to create some type of consistency because that's where the results are. That's where true health lies in the things that we do day in, day out. It's not about the things we do on occasion, the things we do once in a blue moon. And we need to take, take it from where we are to get to where we want to be. And we need to start taking a more balanced approach, right? There's so much imbalance and there's so much where people just try and go all in from coming from completely standard American junk food, processed diet, addiction, and then they fail and they automatically assume like, oh, well, I guess that's it. I can't do this, right? They don't take the right steps. They don't do any type of transitional work, right? So I think we got to get out of this whole mentality of like perfection and I think we need to take people from where they are. And people aren't in ideal or natural environments, right? Most of us are in unnatural environments. We're in cold environments. So you're not going to have access to everything that you need. 
So I always say we got to work with what we have, do the best with where we're at and what we have access to. And instead of just being like, it's perfection or it's all or nothing. Right. And I think that then we can start. First of all, with knowledge and information and, and kind of correcting all of the there's a sea of just crappy garbage information out there. <clears throat> Right. And so many people are just completely just wrapped up in all of it. So they can't understand the truth. It's they can't see the truth. They don't understand it. And they there's so much confusion out there. They don't know where to go. Right. So what I try to do is try and bring things back to common sense logic, right? Intu intuitive knowledge, instinctual knowledge, right? What makes sense? What doesn't make sense? What what is complete bullshit? And what is truth? What is factual and not? And you can understand that just through common sense logic. So that's what I want to try and bring back people to. Yeah, people. That's what I try to get back to, man. That's why I'm simplifying my life with the watermelon and shit. Yeah. Because like, like simplify things, man. Don't overcomplicate it. Go into thing, go into doing one thing first. Start somewhere. Um, since COVID and everything, man, the world been crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh so many things have happened where do you see this world headed at let's say like the next five years what do you see what, what's the world gonna look like to you so i believe that covid was a necessary evil and i think that's that literally propelled us a hundred x into shifting the whole paradigm of the world into a more holistic minded earth and population right because it really, what it did, as much as it, the whole thing was awful and tragic, it shifted us into, or it lifted up the veil of the corruption and the lies and all the evil that was going on behind the scenes. And it opened up people's eyes to that, right? And without COVID happening, most of these people would have never realized all of the corruption behind the pharmaceutical companies right behind the doctors behind the government behind the politicians so i think that it shifted us forward into a great awakening and what i think is where we're headed i think we're we're headed towards creating what you would call a new earth right mm -hmm. where we where we create on an individual level paradise on earth for all humans right for all humans for all species and i think that that's where where every single person thrives right we're kind of ending all this unnecessary pain and suffering that we're going through now i do think that things are going to get more hard before they get better right i think we have a lot to go through before we get there right, right? but i do think people are starting to kind of think like right the seed has been planted like whoa maybe maybe the doctors don't have their our best interest in mind the pharmaceutical industry or companies right? Maybe the government doesn't want to take care of us, right? So I think that needed to happen to wake up a majority of the population. And now I think more people are awake now than ever before. That's a fact. That's a fact. I see more, wake, more woke people on my timeline than ever before. I remember when I first came into knowledge, like back in 2011, to speak about some of the stuff we speak about, you as an outcast. Yeah. Like yeah. Now, now you get praised for speaking the truth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it'd be simple truth too. It, like you said, it'd be simple truth. And people navigate towards it. But I think that's a good thing too, because people need to be back to the simple truth. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm trying to bring it back to. That's why I come up here and I say food up. And there's really not no message behind it besides that. You know what I'm saying? Fruit up. And yeah. it changed your life. You feel me? And that's what I'm running with. So um uh, Lachey said new earth. That's a fact. Um, before I ask you anything else, you got anything you want to say or ask me or anything? I mean, what I would say is that I love what you're doing. And I think that simplicity is key. And I love the message that you had. I didn't even need to know you to know that I wanted to speak with you, right? That I wanted to get right. an interview. I just literally went to your page for a second. I was like, oh, this guy has good vibes, man. Fact. Right? That fact. was it. I just knew I, it was, a, you know, I we're all more in tune with the energy and things like that. Definitely, so, definitely. All this is happening for a reason, man. So it's time yeah. to rise up. Time to rise up. 
No doubt. And I don't believe in coincidences. I believe, like you said, everything happens for a reason, mm -hmm. right? I'm here to meet you and talk to you for a reason, right? We're going to set some new people on a path, right? That, that'll completely change their lives and their reality, you know? And you're stepping into your role as a leader in the community. And I appreciate all that work that you do. And, and I appreciate the message that you're sending, right? And I appreciate the work that you did and the work that you put in to transform your life. Because all you're doing right now, you're illuminating your light. You're bringing your energy out and you're showing people what is possible for them. So, you know, thank you for doing that. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Is the yeah. is a proper way to answer that, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. So I, I got the same vision of the world. I think people need to take responsibility for themselves. You know what I'm saying? The change starts in with you. And uh once you change, you can change everything around you. And uh you've been an inspiration to me, man. Tell me how uh I, you got any programs? You got anything people can join? You got what you got going, like how people get in touch with you? What you got? Yeah. So my main program, I, I right now I just have one program and that is called Electric Human Academy. And that's basically where I took every single thing that I've learned about health and everything, single thing I've done, and I've put it into one place. And then what I've tried to do is create the ultimate health program, right? That encompasses every single thing about health, like I said before where most programs are just like, here, just eat this. That's it, diet, right? So rather than just diet, I've brought, brought in everything that you do, right? How you breathe, how you sleep, how you eat, how you think, how you sunbathe, how you exercise, how you sun gaze, right? How you ground, you know, how you fast, how you transition, rebuild, how you clean out your colon, Right. So it's all of these different aspects I put in together into one program. And that's allowed me to help people heal everything from stage four colon cancer, right, to leukemia, to type two diabetes, to the thing injuries. That's to, great. Yeah. To bleeding ovarian cysts, to herpes, right, to high cholesterol. Yeah. You know, so. It, it, every, just about every single condition I can think of, it's helped. It's allowed me to help people heal that, right? Mm. So that's what I offer now. It's a 13 week coaching program where we literally cover every single aspect of health. Everything is customized around that person, their conditions, their history, their goals, what they're willing to commit to. So that's what Electric Human Academy is. So that's if you want a true health and healing and you want you know, to know everything there is to it. That's, that's what I offer. Let me, I'm glad you said something about that. Cause I meant to ask you back earlier. You uh, first electric being and grounding kind of go together. When you, when you talk to me and when you ask me, what's the importance of grounding? Cause I just went, I grounded today for like an hour and a half and I feel awesome. Can you tell the people the importance of grounding? And on second part, what is an electrical being to you? So. The reason I called the program Electric Human Academy is because each and every one of us is electric beings, every single one of us. So it's really a matter of how much electrical conductivity and flow is going on in between each one of your trillions of cells, right? Everybody's got electricity, but how much electricity? Most people, your average person, I'd say 90% or more their electrical flow and conductivity is obstructed and inhibited to a certain degree. So that's going to affect their vibrational frequency, right? Their, their energy, all of the above. And dis-ease in the body is really a matter of blockages of energy. So what I help people do is restore the electrical conductivity and flow in their body. And through that, disease begins to dissipate the body regenerates itself and disease is no longer there so that's what it's about becoming an electric being again right because when you become electric you feel it again right yes. you access unlimited amounts of energy people don't understand that the body should have naturally sustained energy throughout the entire day right without the need or dependency of stimulants or stimulation. 
right? And so when you remove all those obstructions in the body, that's when the electrical flow is restored. And that's when you have unlimited amounts of energy, right? So, so that's really what Electric Human Academy is about, becoming or re-becoming electric once again, because everybody has that ability. So I just show people and guide them how to get back to that, right? And when you become electric again, that's when you can really, that, that's when you can have anything you want in life. Mm. That's when you can be or obtain anything. Facts. Because then you your manifest your manifestation, right? Your 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 ability to be magnetic and bring things to you. That's where it all comes from, becoming electric again. All right. that just falls into place. Beautiful. You know, so I say in the program, it's all about charging up that electricity. And through those different practices and modalities is where the, the charging up comes from. Right. And that and that's everything from for a man, that's semen retention. Right. Sexual energy is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful energy for a man. Right. So it's things like that. Right. Now, grounding is just one aspect of that. Getting your feet, bare feet on the bare on the earth, soil, dirt, grass, sand. That's one way to charge up the electrical frequency in the body. But it's also a way to balance the elect the energy inside the body because when you're attached to the ground then all of this energy maybe unnatural electromagnetic frequencies can be balanced and be eliminated through that right so not only are you charging up you're also balancing the energies in your body and we're getting blasted by all different types of energies right yeah. the 5g the wi-fi the cell phones you know so when you ground, you're eliminating the unnatural frequencies, you're balancing the energies in the body, and you're absorbing the energies from the from the earth. Mm. So, you know, that's electrons and all that stuff. And you can feel it and you can feel it. Now, when you talk about semen retention, right, a lot of people, a lot of men be like, hold on, semen retention, I ain't about to, you know what I'm saying? They ain't got that discipline. <laughs> but Let's talk about how long, what's the, what's the, what's semen, what's the level of semen retention we talking about? Like how long should a man do that or practice it in order to feel the benefits or to say that that's a good way to do it? Yeah. You see a lot of people get semen retention confused with not having sex. That's what I just got it confused with. Hey, right? Yeah. See, that's <laughs> the thing. <laughs> that's, one, that's one of the biggest things where people are like, hell no. Hell, right, I'm not right. Doing any of that. <laughs> right? So just because you retain your seminal fluids, right, or your life force energy doesn't mean you can't engage in sex. Mm. Right. So people need to understand that you can orgasm without ejaculating. Mm. Right? Oh, but like we gotta get into that. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> 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 so we, th this is called that's called nutting up the spine right mm. you're, you're actually sending the energy and the fluids up the spine into the brain right into the crown chakra right so you can literally do that and you can orgasm without ejaculation and you can have sex without ejaculation and every single time you do that the electricity the, the electrical frequency of the body is built up that's called charging up Mm. right you can even do that through masturbation yeah right yeah. now ret retention is you don't have to retain for all that long what i would say is to minimize the amounts of times that you are ejaculating but what i will tell you is the longer that you retain your seminal fluids right your life force your vitality the more that's going to build up in your body right because most people are used to just jerking off to porn every single day. Right? <laughs> so what you're doing then is you're yeah. spilling and giving away your life force energy when you ejaculate like that. Mm -hmm. You know, for one, that's addiction, right? And two, you're losing your vitality in your body, right? Because what is that? What is it? The seminal fluids, that fluid is literally utilized or that is used to create a brand new life. So we got to think about how much energy that requires, Facts. right? So every time you do that, think about how much energy you're losing, how much chi you're losing. But what I'll tell you is when you retain that fluid, your life force, your testosterone, your vitality, your energy, your electricity is going to build up to levels beyond your comprehension. 
right? And that's when you really, be, really become magnetic, when you really yeah. become um, electric, when you really manifest your dreams and bring your, your dreams into reality. So, so, so let, me say, let me give you a, a scenario. Say you go like, say you go like a whole month or two months without no ejaculation. Is that very beneficial? Just to give people a sense. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, I wouldn't say like, you don't have to be obsessive about it, like where you're going for anywhere from six months to a year of doing it. Right. right. I wouldn't say it's like, you have to do it for a year. You can't ejaculate at all. I'd say like every once in a while, like go ahead. But I'd say the majority of the time you want to retain your fluids. And I would right. say even after 30 days, you're going to be on a whole nother level. <laughs> right? you're gonna you're, you, trust me when you do 30 days of semen retention you're gonna experience a level of vitality and energy that most people will never touch right mm -hmm. and and you're and also your frequency and vibration is gonna be rippling out to where you walk into a room people people are gonna feel it mm. right women are gonna feel it you you become more attractive to women because they they sense that they feel that even though they don't realize they're like i don't know what it is about this man but I'm attracted to this guy for some reason. And that's, that's what semen retention does. Right. That's a so, fact. So that, ta that, that takes you to another level of, of being a man. Mm. And I'm telling you, that'll change your life. The longer you retain. It sure will. I'm about to do 75 days of watermelon. It's 75 days of semen retention at the same goddamn time and charge all the way. <laughs> Woo! See, <laughs> When you do that, you're going to become superhuman. Facts, facts. And that's the goal, man. See, discipline is the goal. D discipline is a superpower. When you can get to a certain level of discipline, it's certain level, it's certain people you can't even see no more. It is. You know once, you, once you have discipline, you have you you can do anything. Facts, facts. And I'm telling you, that's what I'm about. I'm about to do. I, was, I, I do this anyway. I, I, I do semen retention and, you know, electrical foods anyway. I just wanted to get your perspective on it. Yeah. But yeah, man, uh, uh, before I get up out of here, man, uh, let everybody know where they can find you at, you know what I'm saying? Uh, which, what, what, just give everybody everything about you before we get up out of here. Yeah, man. So you can reach me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I mean, mostly usually on Facebook at Matt Fu. Um, you can reach out to me on mattformankind.com and that's M-A-T-T -T with the number four mankind.com um, you can reach me on there you can apply for the program on the website you can message me on facebook you can message me on instagram just dm me whatever um, that's usually the way i connect with people mm, beautiful beautiful and if you're trying to heal a disease you're trying to transform your health if you want to reach the highest levels of health then hit me up hit bobby up <laughs> just that's that's where we'll get you Facts, facts, man. That's what this is all about. And I'm glad to have you on for this discussion, man. It's not going to be the only one. We're going to be back at this because there's so many more things I want to talk about with you. But I wanted to talk to you initially, you know what I'm saying, to try to, you know, break the ice, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. next time we do this, I'm going to have a whole boatload of things to get into for you. So I definitely say, man, I want to say this. You've been an inspiration to me. Um, I definitely, you know, look at you as a light. And uh, coming out of the dark, you know what I'm saying? Somebody to, you know, quote unquote, follow, you know what I'm saying? And walk with and be a part of it. So I appreciate you for joining me, man, and taking the time off and talking to me. And uh, everybody on the live, I appreciate y'all too. So if you got any last words, Matt, man, go ahead, please. Yeah, man, um, listen, it's a pleasure. You know, thank you for having me on. Thank you for the work that you're doing. Keep on shining that light, right? That's man. it. You're just glowing, illuminating out into the world. And it's a ripple effect. You know, and my message to the world is that, you know, you can heal anything and everything, right? You mm. are, you are your own healer, right? So take back your power, step into your power, change your life, take responsibility, take control, right? You are the person you're waiting on, right? So I just want to let people know anything is possible. Anything is possible. The only limitations we set are the ones we set ourselves, Facts. Right. Facts. So, listen, it's awesome talking to you, man. And I'm glad that we, you know, got this chance to speak and set the foundation moving yes. forward. And, yes, uh, yes. Yeah. I look forward to all of our future talks, man. It's going down, man. It's going down.
It's going down. Hey, fruit up, fruit up, family. I appreciate y'all. Uh, this has been excellent. We'll be back at it next time. Fruit up. Yes, sir.